I want to know what it was about these roles that appealed to you. What made you choose them? Uh, I mean, the, the group of people uh, who were assembled uh, when I signed on, you know, Fincher and Bo Williman and Spacey and Robin and Kate, they were already all part of the project. So for me, it was a really easy, easy choice there. The cast was quite splendid. And uh, I've always wanted to work with Liev. And then uh, the scripts under Ann Bitterman were, were exceptional. And so it was, uh, you know, I'm very lucky. Uh, for me, it was the people, really. Um, the combination of Shonda Rhimes and Kerry Washington got me really excited. Um, and, you know, when Shonda Rhimes called me and asked me if I wanted to play the president, I, I figured that she'd write a pretty interesting president. And then when I heard about Carrie, who I'd been friends with but was dying to work with, it just seemed like something I couldn't say no to. Uh, for me, I mean, I was, I was just a struggling, out of work actor, desperately looking for uh, a job. And so I'd really, at that time, just kind of try and take anything. Um, but I read the script and I was just so blown away by, uh, by the characters and the story that they were attempting to tell. I thought they were completely out of their minds, but uh, um, they were brilliant. And so I just you know, fought for it. Yeah, I, I came out for a pilot season and um, when I got to The Walking Dead, I, I was like, what the heck is this? And uh, zombies and all this stuff. And um, I, I read it and I didn't really register the zombies at the end of the script. I was, it was more uh, uh, about the characters involved, and it's Frank Darabont and Gail Ann Hurd, and um, so yeah, I, I would have washed their cars to play a part of it. Yeah. For me, it was really uh, the director of the pilot, Gavin O'Connor, who John and I have worked with before, uh, who's a close colleague and friend, and he, he yeah. turned me on to the script, and, and to Joe Weisberg, who, the creator who I met with, and uh, just the interest in character. Uh, it was, you know, at first I was afraid. I saw an FBI agent carries a gun. I just didn't think I'd get stuck in a procedural for five years. But uh, uh, once it became clear that they were really interested in, in the characters and it wasn't going to be a procedural, I, I, was, I was intrigued and, and uh, I just, I just uh, followed Gavin. Norman, could you have imagined when you started that Walking Dead was going to become the phenomenon that it has? No. Um, not at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, when I first when I first auditioned, they, there was a, they had me read Merle's lines, and but I had heard that Merle was already cast, so uh, you know they had me read again in New York with different Merle lines, and I thought maybe he couldn't do it or you know something something like that, and uh, but I had no idea it would be what it is, and it, it's such a joy just to be on that show. I mean, it's uh, it's so fun being with those people every day, and you really become like a family. I've never really done television before, and um, it's, it's been a blessing. I'm completely blessed just to have that job, you know. And your character has certainly become a fan favorite. How does that feel? I was just telling, telling Aaron that I was on a plane the other day, and I was sitting there, and I was drinking a hot coffee at like 6 a.m., and some guy grabs my arm and shakes my hand and goes, oh my god, you're Daryl, and just coffee went all over me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been kind of like that every day. You know? <laughs> And Aaron, how does it feel to be on the other side of Breaking Bad now that it's over? Uh, it's, uh, i got to be honest, it was very hard to, to say goodbye to, um, to that set that, uh, you know, we went running to every single day. We were so blessed. Like he was saying, uh, the family of Walking Dead, we definitely had such a beautiful family on Breaking Bad. Um, it's crazy that it's been, you know, just over a year that uh, we had our final day of shooting. But, um, you know, uh, Michael Slovis, you know, our DP, brilliant DP, wrote us all a note, a famous Dr. Seuss line that said, you know, don't cry because, it over, because it's over, smile because it happened. And uh, I couldn't agree more with that. Mr. President, you had a pretty rough year last year. Yeah, it ended up pretty, uh, pretty devastating for poor Fitz, but... Um, but it was, it, was, uh, it was a great, um, I was really excited by the way that Scandal finished this year. Because uh, Shonda, who pays no, seems to have no interest in making us likable, really. Fitz got to a point where he was extremely, I think, unlikable, really. I mean, it was pretty dark. 
and then somehow she, in the last episode or two, really turned things where your heart breaks for the guy and the loss of a child and at the moment of winning re-election, all the insanity that happens in our show, that somehow she manages to root it in some kind of emotional reality that keeps it away from being soap opera, melodrama, um, is just so much fun. I just, we're just, every day, kind of like every, all these guys are saying, you know, we pinch ourselves that we get to do it every day. And um, I, I was saying to Jeff Perry, as we finished, I said, do you feel like, when they renewed us for season four, I said, do you feel like we're just getting started, like this is season two? He said, yeah, I feel that way. And everybody on our show, I feel that way too. So, um, yeah, I mean, everyone's equity, but I just feel so lucky, yeah. How does it feel to have kicked off a whole binge-watching phenomenon? I, 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 think, it's in, I think it's incredible. I, I think it's incredible that, that they knew to do it like that, you know, that, that Netflix was smart enough and just, you know, I remember asking uh, Peter Friedlander, who, who was on set one day, I was like, so you're really, you're going to put all 13 episodes out in, the, in one day? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, you don't want to do like seven and then wait a few months and do six? <laughs> <Seven>. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, man, that's what our viewers want. And then, and, and I think it's cool that, that one day, you know, uh, I have little kids and one day I'm going to tell them, hey, you know how you guys watch TV? We kind of started that, and that's mm -hmm. that's there's there's something really neat about that because I, I think that's I think that's uh, where where the industry is going. Yeah, actors like to act. <laughs> that's what we do, you know. Yeah. We forget it, you know. Yeah. Most of the time, we're uh, in, in our careers prior to these events that have happened in our lives. You know, we've been going from one thing to the next, and every time you finish a piece, you're out of work. Mm. And uh, remember, the great, some of the greatest actors that I uh, ever met always had that feeling when they finished the job, they didn't know where the next one was coming from. And, uh, and in this kind of situation, you, get to, you, have, a you have a character that uh, you, you have a character that you can live with over a period of time, you can grow with it, you can influence the storyline of the character, and you get to act you know, on a con continuous basis with a, t with a team. And all of us say the same thing about our cast. We, we act with people that are really of superior talent and we're in awe of them. And we come to the set with our bag and our work having been done and then we meet that energy and it, something happens in the middle somewhere and we produce uh, you know, a, a sequence. It's, it's a very beautiful thing. It's being an actor on another level and, I didn't, and it didn't exist before television kind of took over in this way and all of this other technology that you've been speaking about happened. So, it's a wonderful thing for, for us actors. Your characters all had some pretty rough years. Um, can you talk about some of the toughest scenes you've had to film? Noah, why don't you start? Uh, uh, for me, the toughest material that, that we do, uh, uh, that I do, is, is the scenes with my wife. Just because it's so, uh, there's so much distance between us. It's so sad and it's so, uh, it's not even, we don't even fight anymore. It's just sort of apathetic. It's sort of, not, neither of us uh, seem to care enough to even fight, and that's just. A, and I love Susie Meisner, who I work with. She's a fabulous actress, and I love showing up to work with her. But then we and we get into the scene work, and it's just sort of emotionally um, devastating to to live in that space all day. Uh, so in, in some weird way, I, f I found that the most the most challenging uh, part of the storyline. It's hard to it's hard to wash it off too. It's just it, she's she's so. I, I, Amazing and real, and I feel so uh, uh, drained after some of those scenes. Uh, it's been it's been hard, but uh, and at the same your own marriage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny because it's also you know obviously we're, it's just acting. So in some ways it's also it's also sort of energizing uh, uh, and uplifting to, to to explore that with her. But it is I do come home sort of feeling drained from those days. For me. Um, yeah, no question that this year the most difficult thing was in our uh, finale of Scandal, I lost my son. Um, and having, you know, being a father, that's the place you don't want to go as an actor. And um, I'd had to do it but maybe just one other time uh, in a play that I did, but it was a long, had lost a child sometime many years before. But to have to um, put myself in scenes where I had just lost my son, uh, who is not much different in age than my own children, 
was um, much harder than I thought it was going to be. It was extremely um, unpleasant, but that's what we do sometimes. <laughs> so that was that was tough. I would say, it, you know, I do so much. Um, so, so many of my scenes are with uh, Rachel Brosnahan, who, who plays the young prostitute, and then later Rachel. She, the things that I have to do to this young, beautiful, innocent girl. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm such a a complicated, my character is such a complicated man, and just some of those scenes where I have to just treat her like, in 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 uh, in just such horrendous ways. It's I find it very hard to to go to those places and remove yourself from, you know, pull all of you away from it and just be this, you know, at times despicable man that just does these horrendous things. To this beautiful young girl, you know, putting her against a wall and knives and money in her mouth and just <laughs> just. The, the, those things are, are really tough. The thing about this character is that uh, uh, he's, I think discovering this character was the, the difficult thing. Uh, he had a lot of things to do. Uh, he was a violent person. Uh, and uh, he was just coming out of prison for the first time in 20 years. Trying to bring a character forth that you believe, to, to make him believable in his attitudes and stuff, do you know? And just having a little scene to do it in, you say, well, this is a guy who came out of prison, you know, after 20 years, whose son may have sent him to prison. How am I gonna play this little scene with this person? Where am I gonna get that from, do you know? And you take a shot, you know, you, you, you uh, uh, thankfully they, they gave me these little crazy scenes to do, uh, like a scene I'm, I'm reading about, uh, you know, a, a book of, a self-help book on a plane. I turn around, there's a baby cry, crying, and I turn around and a mother's m nursing, and I wink at her. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, now this man has been in prison for 20 years, and now he's on a plane and he does this thing. And they gave me these crazy things to do, uh, which, uh, <laughs> which I, I understood the insanity and, you know, immediately it was a amusing madness. And, uh, but each of those pieces I put a foundation in for the character so that when you saw him again, you knew this guy's off the wall, really, gone. So anyway, finding those little, uh, that architecture was the, the toughest thing, I guess. And Jesse is, had lost quite a few people um, throughout this show. Um, you know, he, he waking up next to uh, uh, his dead girlfriend, I think was one of the hardest scenes that I, I personally had to, had to play. Um, Cause it was just half a day of me desperately trying to revive someone that I, I love. And um, so that was, yeah, it was, that was probably, uh, probably the hardest. The first movie I ever did and I, I, didn't, I had no idea what I was doing, no clue. And the father is in a drunk driving accident and he's in a wheelchair and I have to come out and he sort of gets out of the chair and gives me a hug and it's a big deal. So the director's like, how do, like, like, like Aaron was saying, but he's like, how do you want to do this? I'm like, well, what are my options? I, I had no clue, right? And coincidentally, my real father was in a wheelchair and dying. So I, was, I said, just give me a phone and come get me in five minutes. And the first take we did, I, so much snot came out of my face that they couldn't use it, which I begged them to use. They wouldn't use. But I cried so hard, and, and I always go, like, I think the hardest scene on The Walking Dead, or one of them, was killing my brother. And I always go back to that, because I'm not really, like, classically trained or anything, but I always go back to that. I'll go back to my dad and that and that and that. And I think, the, like, reading that script where I kill my brother and all that, I remember reading that going, oh, this day's going to stink. It's gonna, this is going to be such a bad day, you know? But like Aaron was saying, um, you do put yourself there, and it's, it's it, those scenes like that that are personable or so, they just wreck your day. We've had some fun today hearing stories of worst auditions people have had as they were coming up the ranks. Would you be willing to share your stories? I used to, I used to apologize when I just would bomb an audition. I would s stop, look at everybody, and say... 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> yeah, they're like, it's okay. You want to do it again? I'm like, yeah. Then it, you're just inside your head. And then you pull out the sides out of the back, back of your pocket. And it's just, yeah. <laughs> so, but there's just so many. I mean, I can't pinpoint. Dude, I had one for Armageddon, the movie, the, a long time ago. And uh, I started thinking, oh, I'm going to space camp. If I get this, I'm going to space camp. And that's all I could think of was going to space camp. <laughs> And um, so Jerry Bruckheimer is like, uh, he's like, so what do you think about the story? And Michael Bay, and I'm, I'm good. Well, yeah, it's great, but Space Camp, like 12 weeks? Like, what, well, do, sleep, do I float upside down? I wear contact lenses. Is that okay? I mean, I was just, you can just see Jerry Bruckheimer over there, like, I had one where um, I, was, uh, I had, was auditioning for a Broadway play and had had many callbacks. <clears throat> and I thought, you know, it was a, huge opportunity for me. I was very excited about it. And the final callback, and when you go to do your final thing for a Broadway show, there's like a table twice as long as that one with all the producers and everybody's like 30 people. And it's very nerve wracking. And they had a, a, a reader who was an actress they'd hired to read with us, to read the lines in the scene. But the, this girl <laughs> what sort of thought it was her audition. And so the way that they placed us, we were doing a love scene and they had, like, if you guys are the, audi the, au you know, the auditioners, and I'm me, and she's here, right, with me, reading with me. They place her there, and she starts to read, and we do the scene, and she moves upstage <laughs> with me, like here. So I'm now doing the scene like this. So then I move <laughs> upstage, so that it's like that, and then she does it, and we do this do -si -do. So by the end, we're in this big, long rehearsal room, by the end of the scene, we're up against the back wall of the rehearsal studio. And I was like, um, bye. I was testing for this pilot, and it was a, it was a comedy, and, uh, and which I, I, maybe this is why I don't do them, but I, uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I had auditioned, and, and the director was like, oh, we, we love him, but he was kind of cracking up a little during the, during the take, and it was really funny. And so they said, we're going to do a work session with them before the test, these two directors. And I was like, great, and the, the showrunner. So I go, and I do this work session with them, and I, I cracked up a few times. And they're like, dude, you, you do know if you do that in the test that you're, you're not going to get the job. We want you to get this job. And I was like, I know. I'll, I'll be fine. Let's do it a couple more times. I'll be good. And we get there, and I'm fine with the, with the director, and everybody's in the room, and this poor this lovely young girl is reading opposite me. She has her back to them, and she's she's reading opposite me. And I do. There's this big, really funny moment in it, and I I was fine. I kept a straight face. And this girl sitting across me was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, and totally broke. And then I broke. And I was like, it. She did it. I was like, it was. Like, it wasn't I totally me. called her out. And they were like, they were just like this. The two guys behind the director. I was just like, Mike, Mike. I'm not gonna get this anymore. <laughs> But it, it, uh, I was, uh, so. I haven't been asked to, to audition, audition, and I'm so grateful for that, you know, recently, that they don't ask you to audition. And even that just makes me, everything, one of that's my day, when somebody <laughs> says, well, they're interested in you, they want to take a meeting with you, instead of auditioning me, <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, I actually did an audition for an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. They asked me to audition, and I said, I'll do it. I don't know how many years ago this was. And I, and I went in, and, uh, and I sat there, and then the actor came, and it was like revisiting a certain kind of thing. And, but it made me more, I felt on one hand, more intimidated you know, than I had been even before, because it was, I wasn't supposed to be there. You know, they said, oh, you're reading. You know, like, like, like you're not supposed to be here. And then on the other hand, there's another side of me saying, I'm brave. I'm doing, you know, I'm being an actor. I'm not being a, you know, celebrity. I'm here to work, you know. And then I thought I did a terrific reading, and I didn't get the part. <laughs> my, my biggest mistakes I made as a younger actor was bringing props. I brought props a couple of times, and that is, that's like the most humiliating, that's right. the most humiliating love, fail yeah, ever, you know. It's like, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to bring. I had a guy who brought the props. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But there's nothing more humiliating than should have you got that. I remember one I had a, it was a guy who was a, a wine drinker. He always had this wine glass. And I brought a big wine glass and filled it up with wine, you know. And I, I needed it. It was such a part of the character. And then I just sort of punted the audition 
and it's like you're standing there naked, you know, already. <laughs> but when you have the prop, it just <laughs> yeah, yeah. I figure out what to it's, do with it's it. The it's the worst. It's like you feel like it's <laughs> the fine line between feeling proud and and like a humiliated, you know, adult is is very fine line. I have a question for Aaron. Mm. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Where was Jesse driving? Where is he now? Uh, Jesse was driving far away from there, and uh, he's hiding somewhere. He's hiding out somewhere because his fingerprints were all over that that lab. So he's uh, yeah. I I I I'd like to see him maybe, you know, doing some uh, carpentry up in Alaska. Living the dream, going to counseling. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Michael, what is it like to work with Kevin Spacey? Hashtag Variety Studio. And this is from <laughs> at MK Gobber. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a real treat. Do I have to do 140 characters or less? <laughs> yeah, as many characters as you want. <laughs> no, no, it's a real treat, man. He is—he's someone who I've admired for, for obviously forever, uh, uh, and he's a very serious actor, but at the same time brings such a lighthearted energy in doing his impressions, which he's absolutely brilliant at. Uh, and and he keeps he keeps the crew and the cast and everybody just so energized with the energy that he brings. It's a really He's a, he's a real, he's a real gem, yeah, he's a, and, a, and a hell of an actor, so. From at Wandermo, uh, wants to know, how do you prepare for emotionally draining steam? My favorite steam? television show of all time is, this is uh, mm. Hashtag Variety Studio. Show well, it's like a lot of people up here have touched upon, you know, you, you just, you just. It's the shows when you start, you know, that's when I was a kid. I mean, the preparation is connecting to the truth of the scene, right? So it's making it real, whatever that scene may be, you know. the so the same as any other scene, actually. There's no difference, really, whether it's emotionally draining or uplifting or, or magical or tragic. It's all making it real. What happens next season on Scandal? <laughs> <laughs> I have to know, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. It says, no. Yeah, you have to know. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm sorry I can't answer that question, because we never know anything. So I, I have nothing to say. All right, this is for Norman. <clears throat> and it's um, from my at, mom. <laughs> from your mother. <laughs> at, yes, we asked your mother. <laughs> at Samantha we have wants to know what was your favorite zombie kill this past season? Um, wow. Uh, I liked smashing that one zombie head in the hat hatchback. That was fun. Because it sort of exploded like a grape and went everywhere. <laughs> that was kind of fun. John. What's your favorite television show of all time and why? As, uh, as my granddaughter Zizi says to me, you're an old man, she <laughs> says to me. And I say, I say give me a kiss, honey. <laughs> but uh, I, my favorite television show of all time is, this, is uh, Sid Caesar's Show of Shows with oh. Emma Jean Coca and Carl Reiner. And the, the, it's the shows when you start. You know, that's when I was a kid and that's what I... I grew up imitating him, and it's probably the first time I showed any spark of acting, so that's the one for me.